All right, guys, so now I'm picking up back where we left off uh, for last week's video. Um, if you guys don't recall, for those of you who are new to this video, make sure you go back and check the progress that we made uh, for this little area right here. But for this video, uh, I mentioned this in my last video, but I'll we'll go ahead and say it again. So the bed is going to have to, the frame is going to have to be shortened down 10 inches. And after careful consideration, I was going to plan to do it down in here. But the reason I backed out from that is because there's limited access for welding because it's right under the cap. So the bed will actually mount to the rear, this center hole, and actually this bracket right here. So that lines up. I do not have to make any more brackets. And we set the bed on last video and we have to shorten the frame 10 inches. So uh, we're... I was debating where I could cut it, and ultimately the last the decision that I came up with is we're going to end up cutting this bracket off since we don't need it. For now, temporarily, I'm going to be leaving the fuel tank cross member up here on, but I am actually going to be removing that later and putting my own on there, putting a different fuel tank cross member because uh, since this is going to move forward, the fuel tank won't fit up in here so he is going to get end up getting a fuel cell ordered eventually in the future so uh that'll be for uh for another day i don't think i'm going to be doing that here but anyways uh so we'll get rid of this i'll put my own in there and then what we're going to end up doing is cutting the frame right behind this bracket right here so right in, right in here i'm going to be cut using a sawzall and trying to cut this uh front hanger off and I'll be using a quarter inch plate since we are going to be losing some metal because you can't cut right up against the frame rail. I'm going to be using a quarter inch plate, welding the plate on there first, and then welding the hanger back onto that plate to space that quarter inch back out. So that will be after we end up cutting the whole frame. But from here, the frame will have to be cut and sectioned all the way up here. So right in here is where we're going to have to cut it and since we can't go directly down because that would tilt the bed and the frame will all be fucked up well it's going to be fucked up anyways because we're shortening it but to reinforce it uh or to keep it level this will have to move perfectly straight and level all the way across so now this point of the frame is actually going to be right up in this area so the frame is going to have a nice little like three or four inch uh, height difference on the top and on the bottom so what we're going to end up doing is uh, re uh boxing that up kind of like doing like i guess you could say a z but technically uh, i'm really gonna want to do a uh, perfect straight cut uh or i might end up doing a z but it just makes it a little bit more difficult but anyways we're gonna end up uh reinforcing it like a, a triangular reinforcement right up in here same thing on the bottom and then doing some fish plates on the inside and outside and then welding this back on and really that's all that we got to do uh, to this thing uh, aside from uh, the axle brackets I forgot I got the uh, adjustable lower shock tabs and then I'm going to be ordering these uh, upper shock tabs getting those on order and I'm going to replace those for him and possibly doing this uh, upper cross member too so I think the majority of this video is probably going to be a bunch of time lapse stuff so without further ado let's go ahead and get started and uh, moving some stuff out of the way and we'll get to cleaning up grinding cutting and all that fun and joyful stuff so let's go ahead and get started So just like that, we are ready to start making our cuts. Uh, the bumper came off because it was keeping me from rolling the uh, differential and assembly out, out, out from under the truck because it was hitting the bumper. So got that out of the way and now we're finally ready to uh, start cutting. The last measurement I want to do is um, I'm going to measure from the ground 
up to the back of the frame right here. So when we slide it forward, make sure it's not gonna be sagging down or uh, be up too high. Now, we're finally ready to start making our cuts. So I'm gonna end up first starting to get this one out of the way. That will be the easiest. And then if I have some Sawzall blades, I gotta check, double check and make sure. Uh, we'll go ahead and start knocking these out of the way. And then we'll clean up the general area uh, on both inner and outsides, inner and outer, to uh, clean the metal, get it prepped for welding. I'm actually gonna go ahead and clean the whole back half of the frame, uh, just because I'm gonna end up painting the whole back half, kind of like, kind of how like I usually do. I've had done it on some builds, but I'm actually gonna do it on this one, especially since I'm gonna be doing uh, this bar now. Um, I might go ahead and get rid of this tube as well. And I don't know if I wanna do a cross member right here because if he does end up going any lower, uh, I don't want that cross member being in the way, especially since he are, he did have to cut it uh, for his current uh, right height. I don't know exactly what right height he's at. So so uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and start getting our cuts made up here. And, uh, and then we'll see where we go from there. So. All right guys, so yesterday was a little bit of a grinding session. Just took the time to grind that out, didn't take me too long. But uh, today is the next day. It's really not gonna be anything too exciting. Really, honestly, I'm just gonna end up just grinding a bunch of stuff. So uh, I'm wanting to move my AC thing down here so I can blow some cold air over there while I'm grinding. But um, it's gonna be a little bit difficult with this space. Hey, no. Don't chew that. What's wrong with you? But uh, yeah, anyways, uh, I'm gonna be uh, just passing the day today, just doing a little bit of grinding. Um, I think this one will be pretty much straightforward. Like I mentioned before, I'm gonna try to use some Sawzall blades at first. If not, I got some, uh, I'll try to use my uh, death wheel right there and try to use that to cut it off. But we'll try to save these uh and then we'll go ahead and cut this off get that out of the way grind that down smooth so it's up against flush against the uh frame rail uh maybe plug it up but i don't know yet and back here just to clean this up we'll take this off and i'm gonna actually like this i will go ahead and grind off all the way just get that off because that's just nothing that you really need uh same thing with this side get rid of this little hanger uh get rid of this hanger I believe I might have to cut one off because there's one down there. I have to cut that off and temporarily take his muffler off. And I'm gonna have to grind this one off because that one's welded onto the frame as well. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, and then I'll check and see, make sure I have a new uh, tube right here before I cut that off. And that will be it. And then pretty much, like I said, all I'm gonna be doing today is doing a bunch of grinding. So let's just go ahead and get started on this thing gonna be really loud noisy and dusty so it's another hot humid day here in lovely Tomball Texas so I'm gonna be spending the day just grinding away no pun intended so let's go ahead and get started we got a lot, got a lot ahead of us
we have pretty much the whole uh, rail on this side cleaned up. All we have left to do is to go ahead and start cutting this thing out. That one, um, looks like I might be able to save it and not have to make that quarter inch plate like I mentioned before. So <clears throat> hopefully we'll uh, get around using that plate. But anyways, now I am uh, gonna go ahead and do the rest of it off camera. As you can see how dirty this job is. Um, pretty much uh, do the same thing over there, clean up that rail, pretty much clean up the whole thing and possibly see if I can clean up this whole frame uh, tonight. And um, then once I come back, I'll come and mark this or get one cut side cut off or both of them cut off. And I'll show you guys with everything cleaned up and then we'll be ready to start bracing up the rear end of the frame so we can start cutting it off of the truck. So let me go ahead and get this done and I will get back with you guys in a second. All right, well, I think that's gonna cut it for today. I've done enough grinding with this death wheel. I, this thing actually worked incredibly well to knock off all the the oily stuff on the frames. Um, it does suck a little bit because those little wires do tend to sling off and they get impaled in your skin. So safety is gonna be a key thing with that. So make sure you wear a face shield and make sure you wear long sleeves, pants, unlike me. So. This was a very, very dirty job, but something most people won't see, but for peace of mind, we still gonna do it. Uh, I still got a scuff up in here. I'm not gonna be able to uh, get to it good with the wire wheel, because that's gonna be a death sentence right there, trying to maneuver that thing around in the inside of the frame. But luckily it's just back here. Uh, I still got to scuff a little bit more on the underside and um, once we get this done, then we still have to clean off and uh, strip the different differential down once we get close to working on that. So I am going to cut it for today. I am pretty tired. That was about four hours of work for me. Um, it's getting pretty late. It's about 8 o'clock, 8.15. So we're going to cut it. Uh, this one also was a little bit difficult to clean. I did take that wire wheel too right here, but it doesn't even look like it did anything to it. So, if anything, I'll just use the little scuff pad just to, just so the paint sticks to it. But, um, yeah, that'll be, I guess, for tomorrow for another day. So, so right now, let's go ahead and skip to the next day. All right, so I'm back on the build on another day. Um, we're going to have to get a little bit going on this because it's starting to get some surface rust on the frame. So, I don't have too much battery life on my phone right now to record. So all I'm gonna be doing is something pretty simple. I'm gonna be cutting these out so I can end up moving these forward once we uh, start shortening up the frame. But all essentially I'm gonna be doing is cutting along the inside of the bracket right outside of the weld. Get this bracket cut off and I'll grind it back down. I'll show you guys after I cut it off and then we'll grind it down, show you guys again. And then we'll kind of position it over here where we're gonna to have to weld it now to. Um, I already took some measurements from the ground up. So that's pretty much all we need. Um, I'll probably take a measurement of the angle of the bracket so we can make sure it's at the right angle, which shouldn't matter too much. All we really need to do is make sure the height is correct. But regardless, I'll make some measurements of the angle. So let me go ahead and get started on this cutting. It's just a bunch of grinding and cutting with a little death wheel over here. So I'm gonna get that cut and then I'll pick this back up whenever we're on to the next step. All right, guys, so here we go. This is pretty much how I ended up cutting it all the way around. I already got my measurements of the angles and all that. So that like that. Still a little bit of middle on there, but just like that. Now it's perfectly still flat how it should sit up against the frame. So I'll just clean up the edges a little bit. And really, this thing is going to go all the way up here somewhere. So I'm going to set this back temporarily and kind of get a baseline. Um, I don't know exactly where yet. I think I might mark it on the bottom somewhere, like mark the center of it, and then uh, I'll move it back, or technically forward, the 10 inches that we're gonna be shortening the frame. So hopefully it'll fit. It'll be somewhere right up in here. Uh, what I'll probably do is like take a tape measure from the edge of this and then make a line up in the front, a perfectly vertical line, kind of to match that. 
and we'll mark that line and I'll know that the edge of this has to go on that line. So move it forward 10 inches and then all we'll have to do is adjust the height afterwards. So uh, gonna make my line first and then make sure I don't need to grind any more of this up here in order to put the bracket on or weld the bracket on. And then I'll come back to this once we clean all this up. <clears throat> all right, well, here is my mark where the front or the back of the hanger has to go. So I ended up measuring it and we are gonna have to bottom it out as much as we can onto the cab. Um, I might just grind down the end of the cab just a hair, just to get a little bit more clearance. Um, I might end up cutting that pinch weld a little bit because the problem we have putting it here is this is where it's gotta have to be, it's gonna have to be to move forward the 10 inches since the rear hanger is gonna move forward 10 inches. Um, the problem with this is the bolt hole is about uh, a little bit over an inch closer uh, move downward than where it's supposed to be. So that in turn is going to raise our right height in the rear, which I think it should be okay with that. Um, I'll message him and let him know. But before that, I'm gonna try to, like I said, mentioned, uh, cut this corner up a little bit and make sure I can uh, see if I can make some more room, make some more clearance so we can raise this back up. Um, I mean, it's not too big of a deal if we end up having to drop this more. It's, it is gonna end up raising the back end a little bit, but obviously you can take care of that with, um, I don't think he has drop shackles. Yeah, he does. Sorry, I'm just trying to look over there. Um, he does have drop shackles already, already, but he does have the flip kit with a four inch block on there. So if anything, he could, put a bigger block, but that would be up to him. Uh, he did mention that I, if I wanted to, I could take that block off in the meantime to make it easier so I don't have to cut the tubs on the bed for now. But we'll see, I might just end up leaving it. It's not, I mean, it's not too much of a hard job uh, to cut those tubs, but I'll make sure and see if he wants to cut those. But anyways, uh, yeah, there's my mark where this is gonna have to go, but I'm gonna make a few more cuts right here. At least I have my mark now where I need to have the um, the hanger sitting to move forward. But I'm gonna modify the cap corner here a little bit just to see if I can raise it back up. But we'll see. Uh, but gonna do that and then gonna go ahead and just go ahead and grind this down and get it all nice and Well, actually, you know what? I don't have to because this is pretty much a section where we're gonna be cutting the frame anyways. So I'm probably gonna end up cutting it like right around in here and then taking about the 10 inches out somewhere right in here. So I won't worry about grinding. So instead, I'm gonna focus on making some clearance, clearance. So uh, let me get to work on that and then we'll pick it back up here in a second, again. All right, well, I got my first rough measurements uh, cut out right there, or I'm sorry, I got my rough estimates measured out right there. So from right there to right there is where we're gonna have to cut and then we're gonna have to go straight across. I still haven't done the measurement on the other side. Uh, I'll do that probably tomorrow. It's getting pretty late tonight. I could, did kind of start late, but um, that's kind of a rough start right there. Pretty much now what I'll do is I'll use like these points of reference on the other side. That way at least the outside cut will be exactly the same. The only difficult part is trying to get the inside line just as, uh, on point as the outside ones. So that's gonna be the only difficult part. Um, I wanted to try to use a uh, the cutoff wheel to kind of cut it and just work my way around them on both sides. But um, I don't know if that's gonna work because like I said, I don't know if it's gonna be in the correct spot. So um, I kind of want to use a, the um, Sawzall, but uh, you can't control the inside of the blade on the inside of the rail, so that might like be wavy. So that was my concern. But I'll go ahead and get the other side marked tomorrow. And after that, after I get both sides marked and ready to cut, I'm gonna check them as many times as I can before I actually cut it. So um, that's gonna be the plan, but that'll be for tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll be marking the other side of the rails. All right, so beforehand, I actually forgot to mention my little cut right here. What's up? ¿Me dejas trabajar? 
So this is the way I ended up cutting it. I did go all the way up close to the spot welds, as close as I can. And that actually helped. And I was able to move my hanger up close enough to like right there. It still has some clearance, barely any, but some clearance. But regardless, that gave me enough uh, clearance to be able to raise this up high enough to where it's at the same height as where it was originally. So they did on both sides already. So both of these hangers will perfectly fit right there and stay at the same height that they were originally. So that's all good there. The one thing I am considering doing is since I can't really cut that hole on like on the inside, right there for the bolt for the hanger, what I was thinking of doing is getting a hole saw or a drill bit. Hey! Niño ruidoso. But, uh, so anyways, trying to get a bolt, um, sorry, a drill bit or a hole saw that is just about as big as the bolt. That way, what I was planning on doing is welding the nut to the backside, the inside of this hanger. There should be enough clearance right there to, to clear the frame rail. So that way, we can, instead of having the bolt come in from the inside and then having that nut on the outside like it was originally, I'll weld the nut on the inside and then that way you can take your bolt in and out from the outside and you don't have to worry about um, putting a, a second hole on the inside like that, trying to line it up. So, otra vez. So yeah, that's gonna be my plan. On that, it's gonna be welding that nut to the inside and then drilling a hole in the frame for the bolt to protrude into. So that'll be the plan with that. But mañana, that'll be tomorrow. Tú, niño ruidoso, vamos a dormir, a mimir, come on. All right guys, well now it's another day and I'm finally back on this build. And we got our boxes marked out. That's pretty much where I rough estimated to cut it. So now that this is ready, I'm going to try to pull out some of the square tubing that I have. Some tiny, like, I think one, it's one inch or one and a half inch wide tube, square tubing. Um, and I'm going to make four legs on each side, on each four corners back here. So the uh, back half kind of stays roughly the same height. And then once I cut that section out, then we'll be ready to slide this forward. So uh, I don't know where I'm going to set it up. Let me go ahead and get my stuff cut out. I don't have much battery life on my phone right now again. So I'll get those pieces cut out and then I'll show you where we're going to place them and then weld them in. All right. Well, I didn't decide to pull out my square tubing because I have a bunch of stuff laying on top of all that metal. But we have some perfectly good scrap angle iron that was sitting over there. So we have four of these all set in place. Now this is gonna support the weight of the frame once I cut it. So at this point now, we're finally ready to start chopping and chopping. So first I'm gonna do, use my angle, ang angle grinder, grind the outside of it, and try to get it as parallel with the frame right there as I can. And then what I'll do is I'll take the Sawzall with that flat blade, set it flat up against the frame rail, and just saws it straight down. Hopefully it all comes out well, but that's gonna be the plan. Um, I'm gonna try to go get, I'm gonna go get my charger and set this up on a time lapse because I'm sure this is something you guys would like to see. So we'll go ahead and set this up and we'll get the cutting finally. So this will be the moment of truth.
All right, well, I think we're well past the point of no return, but we are cut. I did a set it back uh, just to get a good picture of it for the thumbnail for this pic for this video. But we are cut. Now I'm ready to I'm ready to sli slide it up forward, made it up against the frame rails, and check and see if my measurements are going to be correct. Uh, side note, which is weird, uh, I did do some cross measurements from the cross member right there, the edge of the cross member, back to the corner of the frame rails. Uh, and the measurements were actually off by three eighths of an inch. So I don't know if this truck may have some frame damage, but um, also on this, from the back of the cab to the edge of this mount hole was 21 and seven eighths. And the same point on the other side was 21 and 11 sixteenths. So, Hopefully we can get it squared up and lined up. Pretty much these two will have to go down 10 inches. So this have to, will have now have to be 11 and 7 eighths and that one 11 and 11 sixteenths. And then I'll just cross it, cross check it and make sure it's um, square. And then I'll just make sure it's still the 3 eighths off. That way it's not crooked. But now let me go ahead and set it forward and see if we can get this to line up. And now you can see exactly where the frame rails are going to mount up to or how how the offset's going to be so i'll sit you guys right here and we'll scoot you guys down there all right so let's go ahead and set this forward So as you can see, this side didn't come out too bad. It's still sort of flush right there. I don't have too much of a gap, but that side did come out a little bit wider. But well, actually, I might just need to be scooted forward. See if I can do this. Kind of dry hump it, try to get it to go in. That's what she said. That's not too bad. It's a little bit better. Looks worse on camera. I might have to get a little give it a little left tap with a hammer here let's see because because that's what i was afraid of was the sawzall blade wasn't going to be exactly uh cutting perfectly parallel but that's not too bad i mean that at least gives us some room to uh get some good penetration on the welds uh let me uh do my cross measurements real quick and see where we're at with those all right, so right there, hold on, let me turn my air conditioner off for you guys. All right, so these points are A-OK, -okay. they're perfect. And same thing on that side, those two are, are fine. They did move the forward the 10 inches. Uh, these are gonna be a little bit different because it is crossways, it's not gonna perfectly go in 10 inches, that's what she said. Uh, but we are at 74 and a half this way and 74 and a quarter this way. So we're not completely 3 8 uh, off like we were originally. We're a little bit less than that. We're just at 1 8 off, which is nothing, uh, especially since it's crossways. But uh, regardless, either both both the ways is fine. I think right there should, we should be good. I'm going to uh, tack it up right there. I wish I could go ahead and set the bed on somehow, but I mean, if I tack it, I don't think that can hold the weight of the bed. But with the measurements that we did, I am confident that we should be okay right there. So that is gonna be a pretty good boxing right there uh, that we're gonna have to do. So we don't have that much overlap. So we're gonna do a nice little box down in here and right up here. So we got it, there we go. Not too shabby, wasn't too difficult. I think this is going to cut it for this video. Uh, I think it should be up for uh, tomorrow. So uh, I guess really nothing too exciting in this video, but a lot of grinding, a lot of prepping, and a lot of measuring. Sure, sure did do a lot of measuring. Not on camera, off camera. I did just try to do it as precise as I can because it is something that you got to get perfect. Otherwise, you're going to have 
uh, alignment issues and the bed might be crooked and all that good stuff. So all oh, bad stuff. So next time you see this, uh, next time, next Sunday, you will be seeing us go ahead and starting to weld this up, box it, reinforce it, and get it all back together. And we should be ready to start finally setting the differential back in place. We'll have to set the front hanger back on and finally set this bed on and then finally do that cross member. All right, so I think that's gonna cut it for today, guys. Uh, thank you guys so much for sharing and liking and commenting on the videos. You guys really blew up the last video that I uploaded. I almost doubled the views that I normally get on my previous videos. So thank you very much for that. Uh, make sure you click the link below. I still have a bunch of merchandise available. Get yourself some El Gallo Built merch. And make sure, again, you like, comment, subscribe, share my videos. And next Sunday, we will get back at this and start finishing and now welding up the new shortened frame. So thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you guys next Sunday.